St. Clair Shores, Michigan, a summer resort community about 40 minutes from Detroit. Located on prime real estate is Jack's, a lakeside restaurant recently acquired by three bodybuilders, Bill, Scott, and Tamar. Let's do it, Scott. I met Bill and Scott at the gym. Easy, get it? We all work out together and hang out together. All of us are partners in the restaurant. Jax is known for having great entertainment, being the resort-style place to come to. It's like girls gone wild across the whole lake. Winter time, there isn't much going on. Jax has had a reputation for bad food. I don't think I'd order again. And so that's really, in my opinion, that's what killed us. We really got to fix this. We brought AJ in to run the kitchen. Here's the ribeyes. AJ is Tamer's father. No, that's your table, that's your kebab. I don't see the fish and chips, man. No, you don't understand. We put all this trust in him. Oh, never mind. And the kitchen has completely fallen apart. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. So we can put him in the front of the house to act as the general manager, just so we don't have to fire him, because that is my partner's father. Can I help you with something? I'll be talking to the customers, flirting with the ladies, and asking about the food in between. I'm gonna go get myself a drink. On a business level, I can't stand the man. Every night during hours, he gets wasted. He gets so drunk. Bring it on. Ouzo <laughs> <laughs> is my favorite drink. I like to drink Ouzo. And we are gonna have music tonight. To me, it's not professional. <laughs> it's a nice life. I like it. <laughs> Get him out, take him out and beat him. Scott is dangerous. He can hurt you if he wants to hurt you. People are terrified of him. No, no, no. One minute late, I'm telling you to see. Started getting calls from customers saying he scares everybody away. So Tamara and I had to make a decision to remove him from the restaurant. Unbelievable. He's a silent partner now. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Total mess. We got Aaron in to replace my father in the kitchen. I'm looking for 53 calamari. Let's go. I had only been here seven weeks, and the whole ball of wax was, uh, was, was messed up. I'm smelling fire. I knew there had to be some changes, but I wasn't going to be allowed to make them because the owner's really happy with the menu. It's just unfortunate that we have to take money from other avenues to try to make the place survive. I'm the one that has the most investment. I have almost a half a million dollars invested. If we're about to lose this business, I can't recover. Scott feels that we are running the business into the ground and he's losing all of his money. We owe Fairway $11,000. I mean, we owe back sales taxes. We owe back payroll taxes. When you start getting to owing the government money, then you know, that's an issue. If things don't change, I don't know how to make the place survive. Taking advantage of the frozen lake, Gordon snowmobiles his way to Jack's. Wow, absolutely amazing. This restaurant is centrally located at the heart of five great lakes, but they're in trouble. I don't know why, and I'm about to find out. Unbelievable. Jacks. Wow. What a place. Welcome to Jacks. Hey, nice to Jack. see you. Nice to have you. Gordon. Come on in. I'm actually not nervous, but I hope he loves the food. Of course. Um, AJ, so you're the owner? No. But Scott is here, and oh, Bill are not. here, yes. And Scott is the bouncer? No. Why are you standing there looking oh, for a fight? <laughs> hey, come over. Is that the way you're standing there? How you doing, my man? How are you doing? Good, good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Are you in training or what? I've been huh? training 24 years of it's my life. It's extraordinary. Are they real or...? <laughs> They're very soft. <laughs> so, um, you're the owner? I'm one of the owners. Oh, uh, his son is another owner. Oh, okay. Tamar, he'll be in this he's afternoon. Okay, okay, good. And there's one more somewhere. Jeez. Nice to meet you. Huh? Another <laughs> gym rat. Extraordinary. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Should we step Thank out? This is... After meeting two owners and a general manager, Gordon decides to talk to each of them individually so that they can be totally honest about the problems at Jack's. Now, what kind of hours are you putting in? 65 a week. And Scott put 65 in? No. We had to move him out of the restaurant. He was scaring my employees. Holy shit. Why was Scott pushed out? Because he's lost a ton of customers because of the things that he did. We got complaints, complaints, and complaints. 
Why would you scare customers away? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe because I was intense, you know. But I want to be more involved. What's the problem with the restaurant? We have terrible food. Yeah. What's the problem with the restaurant? I personally don't see a problem with the business. It's really good. It's... OK. Um, what's the problem with the restaurants? AJ. What's he drinking in the You know, he drinks ouzo all the time. He just turned around and drank a quick shot. That's what he does. Makes him $100,000 a year. 100 grand? Yes. Ridiculous. Oh, my God. Three individuals, three completely different stories. I haven't even tasted the food yet. Where'd you start? Oh, my God. OK. Here we go. Hmm. Right. Nice Erica. to see you, darling. Erica, it's really important for me to see as much as possible. I would try this omelette here. Oh, it's crab's just split with a cake. It's, it yeah. looks like crap. Yeah. <laughs> a crab omelette? Yes. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> OK, I'll definitely take one of the uh, K omelets. Okay. Then I'm going to go after that for the uh, honey pecan salmon. OK. And then um, mm. good old-fashioned fish and chips. Oh, good. Yeah? Thanks, Alan. Excellent. You just sat there and staring at me like some big muscle-head meatball. Fuck me. Aaron. What? Why do you spell with your crab with a K on the Because it's not real. It's my crab meat. I didn't want anybody to get the misconception. It's artificial. That's a guarantee, no complaints on this. Guaranteed? Guaranteed. That's a pretty bold statement. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. Wow, look at the size of that. That's a lot of crap. And you haven't told me about the K yet. Oh, he said he wanted everybody to know that it wasn't real crab, it's artificial crab. So he spelled it with a K so there was no misconception. So it's fake crab meat mm -hmm. in a seafood restaurant on the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck me. Holy crap. Rubber, tasteless. That's going straight to the trash. Okay. Oh, my God. What's Our wrong? He hated it. Why? The fake crab was the number one reason. The omelet didn't go over well. No. He doesn't like the crab in there. I, I've never, I, that was already here. I didn't buy that stuff. I don't want to use frozen fish. It's not a product that I'm absolutely overly proud of. But at the same point, I'm held accountable for all the inventory that the owners have paid for. How's the food so far? Why are we serving fake crab in an omelet? I don't. He did that. You're the general manager. <laughs> Why, did you... Why are you laughing? I give the choice. Have you been drinking? No. The crab was shocking, embarrassing, and fake. It tasted disgusting. Have you tasted that crab? No, I'm extremely allergic to crab and shrimp, so no I crab can't in, even there's eat no it. crab in there. I understand, it's monkfish. Oh, my God. I'll let you finish your meal. General manager, my ass. I'm being blamed. He thinks that I should be allowing him to do that. Or letting him letting serve him. those types of Correct. dishes? Because it's fake crab. AJ is the general manager. He's supposed to oversee the food. And now I'm hoping and praying that Gordon says AJ is the one that's pleading his business. OK, fish and chips. Certainly the best looking thing I've seen. Is that really rubbery? Is it frozen, the fish? I believe it's frozen. It is frozen. When you take a bite of that cod, it's almost like you've got a breaded condom in your mouth. Oof. He said it was rubbery, uh, too greasy, and it just said it tasted like a frozen cod, and obviously he hit it right on the button, so. This is the same recipe that we've used here forever, so I am for change. I want the change. Good. Wow, this one is the salmon. salmon. Look at that. Thank you, sweet. Damn. I think just so sweet. The dressing is like honey, and so much of it. Absolutely disgusting. Quite possibly one of the worst salmon dishes I've ever eaten. We hated it. Like it? No. I didn't like anything. That's one man's opinion. It's a pretty successful opinion, though. <laughs> Fuck. Whoa. After one of the worst meals he's ever had. This is Chef Aaron. Aaron. Chef Ramsey, how are you doing? Gordon begins to explore how this perfectly situated seafood restaurant can serve such dreadful food. That was horrendous. Why are you serving fake? Crab meat. It's inventory that we have. Have you tasted that? It's plain. There's nothing to it. It's just disgusting plastic. It's exactly what it is. The salmon dish. That was shit at its best. Sweet on sweet on sweet on sweet. 
That's actually one of the top sellers. That's why the place has got such a shit reputation for crap food. It's still not clear who's in charge of the food. He's in charge of the food. It's not true. I have no control. I follow the guys being thrown under the bus because all the recipes and the things that he didn't enjoy are things that were set in place before I even got here. Who's controlling the fucking menu? The owners are. Scott, Just the is that what you wanted here? Not at, not at all. I don't have nothing to do with food. What? Yes. AJ, I want answers. There are certain things that are not under my Sorry, control. You're the general manager. I tried not to have it go on, but I get overruled. AJ has many excuses and never wants to own up to his faults. <laughs> it's terrible. AJ, it's got to be your responsibility. No, no. With no one taking responsibility for any of the problems, Gordon knows the best way to get any answers is to observe tonight's dinner service. OK, how'd you like that cut? All right, it's our first order. We got tables. Tamar, how you doing, brother? After working a full day at his other job. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Tamar, the restaurant's third partner, arrives. Let me ask you straight out, what do you think is wrong with the restaurant? The food's like hit and mess, it's inconsistent. Yeah, and forget the father figure now, but isn't AJ responsible for the food and beverage in terms of running the restaurant and the kitchen? Yes. And every time I asked AJ to what was going on, he was blaming the owners. I do have the most difficult position being here. I'm working with my friends and my father, who is my family, and that makes everything very difficult. It sucks. I'm gonna have a look around. Okay. Spend time in the kitchen, the dining room. Chef. It's good to meet you. Yeah, likewise, finally. This rice has issues. Take this out and at least try to stir it up or something. You brought it up, man. Why well, I gotta move it? There's not enough depth in our kitchen. Yeah, I got a big chunk here, too. What the fuck, man? They've been set in their ways. I don't know that they want to conform to a change. Do we have any rice yet? Nope. I threw it out. Oh, my god. With a clear lack of support in the kitchen. I'm fucked here. Aaron has yet to send out the first wave of orders. She said it's on the way. So it's Christmas. <laughs> My lead is table 11. They don't have any food. Well, if it doesn't come in 15 minutes, I'll see. 15 minutes, we're All right. Here's a big blue filet up top. 45 minutes into the dinner service, and food is finally beginning to leave the kitchen. Keep it going. 64 calamari. I'll take it any time. As the dishes get rushed to the dining room, that looks wrong. customers are receiving food that's not exactly the way they ordered it. We got to send this back. What's wrong with that? It's supposed to be uh, well done in the Oh, for fuck. A well done steak's the easiest steak in the world to cook. It's not too good. It's a little chewy to me. Ribeye, we need this medium on the fly. It was overcooked. There, where the cheese is. She said, it, she said it's terrible. I, she didn't like it. We need a chicken alfredo on the fly. We hate that. OK. He wants this under the heat for it. We're weeded here, dude. We're weeded here. I've never seen frozen food so fucking complicated. Unbelievable. An absolute meltdown. Not just in the kitchen, but the dining room as well. Just under 20 dishes have come back. And more frustratingly, it's frozen food. They can't even cook that right. Unbelievable. Where'd your dad go? I don't know. <laughs> AJ's gonna have to get back up. Where is he? AJ is a general manager here now, and he needs to be overseeing the restaurant. <laughs> we won't probably be coming back here. The food was raw. It was raw. It came we're, we're gonna take care of this, and then. You know, please come back, because it's only going to get better. I don't know. Now just comp it. Buy him around on me. Okay. So much money lost. You guys, I'm getting, I'm giving away every damn meal that I have tonight. Everything I'm giving away, free. Honest to God, the last hour, everything we gave away is free. Oh my God, can it get any worse? I'm watching food get thrown away in the garbage can. That's my money going out the window. It's just a disappointment I let it go on this long. After a chaotic dinner service with numerous dishes coming back and comped food, Gordon confronts the owners with an important question that has yet to be answered. Who has the final say at Jack's? We haven't come to an agreement on that. We've only been in the business for one year. 
AJ, he's been in the business for 40 years, and we were relying on that to drive us to where we needed to be, and he has let us down. That's the truth. That's what it is. Right. So that's a tough spot for you. Yes. My dad has made many mistakes here, but my partners need to step up and understand he's my father, and that makes everything very difficult. You have to separate the father-son. Nothing to do with business. You have to let go. That's the first and foremost crucial thing in this fucking restaurant. Understandable. I think AJ is the main reasons why this business is extremely in whole, and he's still taking his damn check every damn week. We ain't. AJ, you're the one that makes all the money, not us, you know? Yeah, how many hours do I work a week, Scott? That doesn't matter. I put the money up, not for you to lose it. I put it up because AJ was supposed to be a 40-year restaurant. Let me say something. I booked eight parties, big parties, by thousands of dollars, and that's the thankfulness I get from this man. He's acting like a child. You know, be a man, face up. Story after story after story after story, I'm so sick of it. I'm pissed. With so much food coming back last night, that's not normal in any restaurant. So I decided to get in early this morning, have a good look around before any member of the staff come in. That is salmon. That's just marinated in, it's like, an Italian dressing. Oh, dear. What's this? Oh. Seafood restaurant on the water. Tuna and dyed pink to make it look authentic. Look at it. My god. Unbelievable. And here we have... That looks like the mushroom risotto. Great risotto. Unbelievable. Alarmed by the state of the kitchen, Gordon is anxious to take the staff on a tour. Good morning. There's something I want to show you guys, yeah? Come with me. Come in. The general hygiene in this fridge is a fucking joke. All right, come round. Walking round, want to get up to speed, looking at the ingredients, checking. What is that? Is that just taken from the steam table and dumped on the trolley and then whisked yeah, in here? That's exactly what it is. That should be straight in the trash. Hey, I ate here yesterday. Yeah. I'm not happy. Whoever's responsible, 40 years in the business, well experienced, you have to seriously start opening your eyes. This place is not right here. We got no chance. I did not know that was going on. Item after item. Oh, I was pissed. What's this here? I um, believe it's beef tips. Beef bits in blood. That's nasty. I need some answers, AJ. It's pretty terrible, and uh, you know a lot of it lies on AJ. There's no excuse for it. And that's the that's the classic of the day. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a risotto. Take a good look. Unfortunately, it's not a drawing. That's real, serious shit at its best. It's a joke. Look at the fucking color of the chicken. AJ, come and have Harper. a look at it. Yeah, no, you've got to see it, AJ. I do see it. My father doesn't want to deal with the back of the house. The back of the house is falling apart. That's my frustration. I'm sorry, but it's not right. It's got to be somebody's responsibility. I'm not going to take responsibility. It's the owner's fault. Why would I blame myself for that? I'm not going to blame him for that. Unbelievable. Trusting my dad is obviously not working. Look at where all our money is gone. I'm really oh, mad right now. They can't go on like this. Get everyone together. We're going to just get everything cleaned up, start scrubbing walls, cleaning all the stoves, get rid of all that food in there, whatever's dirty, garbage. While the staff and owners clean the kitchen, Chef Ramsey meets with local fishermen. How are you? Pleasure well, meeting you. To see what Jack's is not taking advantage of just outside its doors. Fresh fish. The ice is what, a foot deep? Uh, the ice is actually about nine inches. Look at the size of that tiny little rod. Yeah, I'll try it a couple and times. That, you that, might get um, something that, on there. That, that attracts them, my god. Yeah, if you feel something, then you pull it up. Perch, I mean, very tasty. Oh, very yeah. tasty. Do you yes. ever get into jacks to yes. eat? Yes. Oh, yes, I do. What's the food like in there? I don't like their fish so much because they use a little bit too much sauces and kind of lose the actual flavor of the yeah. real fish, you know? Yeah. You got something on there? I think you no. got a fish. Pull it. Pull it. Pull it up. Oh, yeah, he is, he is on yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. You got one. Very good. Very good. Very good. It's just nasty. It is nasty. And I've had people tell me, when I eat at your restaurant, I get sick, and I start laughing, thinking, oh, they're just full of shit. They're not. They do get sick. Gross. This is fucked up. Oh, my god.
God, look at them, eh? Not a bad catch today. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to um, turn this into a, a really nice chowder, OK? And once you guys are finished, you're going to come over and have a bowl? Absolutely. Yeah? Hey, yeah. thank you very much. Get those Pleasure. bloody hands warm. Yeah. See you later. After an informative afternoon with the locals, Chef Ramsay introduces the first of many changes designed to get Jax back on track. You and you and I are going to go make a chowder. Yeah. And we're going to serve it in a bread basket. Something simple, finished, fresh local caught fish. Let's go. Up. I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. I, I think that this, some of these changes are going to be what does it for us. Start off with a touch of olive oil, bacon, onions, celery, yeah, with a touch of Tabasco. Oh my gosh, I'm standing here next to Chef Ramsay. He's showing me food that he likes and he thinks will work. You better take advantage of it, that's all I can think of. Bang, a really nice chowder. Yeah. And then I'm going to do a little poached salmon as well. So salmon in, three or four minutes in there. The whole thing has to ooze fresh. Out of the cold bouillon. Your broth. Over. Two easy dishes to make the pressure less on the line. I'm excited. Yeah, I hope you are. With the special set, Gordon decides to implement one other change to the dinner service. Scott, you said you want to be more involved. Tonight, run a section. Present the menu, welcome them, hand over, take the order, push the specials, and serve. Scott is going to get beat up really bad tonight. I'd like to laugh at him a little bit. He's going to be running your Ooh. section tonight. Give him your apron. Yeah, I think we've got enough string to go around. And, um, <laughs> yeah, prove that you're not some scary monster that wants to beat the crap out of everybody. Does that large egg have a smile or not? Sure. Yeah. Give us one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, fucking hell. OK. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Push the specials. Excite them. Don't scare them. Uh-oh. Okay. With customers starting to arrive, How are you? Good. Scott is embracing being a waiter. The kitchen seems ready with the new specials. Now I'll keep my eye in the window and communicate with you. And everyone seems ready to make tonight's service a success. I believe we have balsamic or vinegar. Why are you? I would prefer balsamic. If, if we, if I don't have, you know, bear with me. I, I, if we don't have balsamic, is raspberry okay? Okay. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah. I'm watching. He's doing great. Actually. Why is his head all tilted like that? I don't know exactly what happened. I have everything right off for you guys. Thank you. Roly poly. Like a chimpanzee hanging over a cage looking for some bananas. Oh, like, mm -hmm. hey, yes. come on, man. Give us some oomph there, yeah? Oomph, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. It's a half hour into dinner service, and the new fresh seafood specials are a popular choice. I'm going to have a boat salmon. Fish chowder, seafood chowder. As the tickets pile in. Three special salmon and a chowder. The challenge now is getting the food out. God, I need those special salmon. Hulo. Special what? I'd call for stuff, and they'd be not listening to my organization and what I wanted to have come up to the hot plate. One piece of salmon. Did you season it with salt, like I said? Oh, shit. Need it? I need it yesterday. Get it done. Not one table came out of this kitchen completed yet. Fuck. Come on. It's so frustrating looking at the cooks behind the line because they don't actually give a damn. <laughs> so Aaron's got his work cut out, and he can't work with that dead wood. No chance. With Aaron's orders falling on deaf ears. I'm dying, dying for those Alfredos. Very little food has left the kitchen. Wait, where's our food? We've been waiting. 45 minutes to an hour for our food. Shaking. That's I'm getting mad. Getting mad. Okay, calm down. Calm down. It's gonna be okay. Look, you guys. It didn't say cheese on the ticket. I can't have cheese on the burger. What are we gonna do? We gotta fix this. I don't know nothing. Well, they're waiting forever for this food. Be honest, I, I don't know. It's about time they start showing the guy a little bit of respect. But they're not. So that one guy is just rude to him. I need a new bun for this kid burger, please. Anton, give me a new bun on now. Aaron. And look at me. He's got to do it. Yeah. You can't mop up for them. Can we run that? Come right back for that kid burger, please. Christ. The place is going down in flames. The tickets are backed up. Nothing's coming out. It turned into a total disaster. Oh, my God. An hour into dinner service. Virtually no food has left the kitchen. My God. And Aaron, who's only been working at the restaurant for a matter of weeks. Just toast me a croissant. I need it yesterday. I don't know what that is. Now faces the prospect of running the kitchen alone. Why do my items take so long? 
There's too much of a head fuck here. I want to talk to you about it okay. seriously to get it fucking right. And each and every one of you have to step up to the mark. This restaurant hasn't got long to go unless we change. We're changing, with or without you. So do as the chef says and listen, OK? It was good that Chef Ramsey came in and he kicked them between the legs and made said, hey, get your shit together and get out. You got 84 coming my way, right, Grill Fry? Right here. OK. Chicken burger, no cheese. Finally. OK, special salmon. Pinko perch up top, 84 up top. Good. Food is finally coming out of the kitchen. Thank you. Oh Look God. at that. Oh. And Scott is finally getting comfortable as a waiter. Can I get nothing, anything out of your way, guys? Although diners are enjoying the new seafood specials. Bless How's the fresh perch? Great. Great. Yes. Fantastic. Nice. The rest of the menu is a disaster. I need this a little bit more. It's really good. That's not meant well. The, 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 the complaint's going to go straight back to the kitchen. Whoever's cooking the shrimp's overcooking it. They've got to know before service. If we tell them after, the next dish is going to be overcooked as well. It's going to be done straight away. OK. Yeah? The customer can wait. AJ? When they're in a crunch in the kitchen, AJ sometimes gets confused. AJ? AJ? Who's calling me? Of course, we laugh because he waddles away. But at the end of the day, it's really not funny. The kitchen needs to know first, my friend. <laughs> then they stop fucking overcooking it. That's your job. We got a complaint on the shrimp. Aaron, listen. Aaron. Listen. We got a complaint on the shrimp. There was poorly cooked food. Or it was undercooked food, or they weren't happy with the food. We lost it. We lost control. Is that ready? This is not ready. No. This is not ready. Come on, big boy. Sick of this shit. We're going down quicker than the Titanic. We get better service at a shelter than they do here. What the fuck, dude? Where's the honey? I, I don't know. Everything was screwed up. Give it to me again without all the grease in the bottom. Food got screwed up. Oh, I need the whole sandwich remade. Come on, pissed off. With yet another meltdown in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay knows drastic changes are needed. Aaron, there's no one behind there that respects you enough as the head chef, and you need to stamp your authority on that kitchen. I mean, a joke. It is a joke. You're not an asswipe for your staff. They're there to support you. And I'm more fucked off with you, AJ, because you passed it to him. If this was my restaurant, your salary would be cut by 50%. Half your salary can benefit crucial areas that need supporting right now. That's a big thing. He is the motivation for me being here. So cutting my dad's salary, that's not a, a simple thing to do. And I'm not a heartless, cold-hearted person. Tomorrow, there's going to be major changes. We're relaunching this place. And I am going to have them crammed in here like fucking sardines. In order to be ready for the relaunch, Gordon's team works all night to make Jack's a more inviting seafood restaurant. Now, all night we've been working, yeah? Ready. We've made some really nice, exciting, subtle changes. It's beautiful. Ready. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. I'll check it out. <laughs> Very cool. It's awesome. This is sweet. Hey, something. That's the Which I can't believe you've never had in here. I know. Yeah? Fun for the kids, yes? A wonderful fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. What do you think of the boys in the ceiling? Those are great. Huh? That's so great. great. <laughs> so simple, but cool. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at the metal. We've got the oh, wow. wall lined with that corrugated iron. So it just modernizes it up, freshens it up. That looks build. so nice. And no more faded wood. I hated those walls before. Nice little fresh fish tanks on the wall, yes? Oh, there's a little fish in there. We've got the little fish tanks along the wall as well, just so when you sat in those booths, you can have some fun. That is great. I was like, wow. Especially because I thought the only answer to this place was a bulldozer. It's incredible how he took something so simple and made it so warm and inviting. It's, it's great. Thank you so much. Mm. And none of you are very welcome. Now, you're probably wondering why the rope is on the table, yes? This is the new menu, yes? Wow. Yeah, and on the back of the menu, How did yeah, I know? you can have some fun with the knots. That is yes? so cool. OK, it'll give go. the kitchen a touch of time when we get backed up. How fun. Yes? That's awesome. So cool. Chef Ramsey took it real simple. He took a nautical theme we had, and he ran with it, and some simple, nice, light touches, and it's great. I love what he did here. It's warm. It feels friendly. I love it. Thank you. Now that the decor has been freshened up, Gordon introduces the most critical change for this restaurant, a new menu. Fresh mussels. 
Crab cakes, fresh oysters, the fish tacos, yeah? Nice. Like, poached salmon, exactly like last night, fresh, delicious. I'm glad the whole menu's gone. I thought that menu was crap when I got here. Now that it's gone, I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. My favorites, yeah, fish and chips, yeah, with homemade tartar sauce. You now can stand proudly and announce that Jax has the best fish and chips in Michigan, OK? The menu is incredible. I'm excited to actually be a part of this new restaurant and Hitchin where it's needed. A big night. We're relaunching Jack's tonight, and we're starting afresh. People are going to come back to this place and finally enjoy coming back to Jack's again. OK? We're ready. Don't fuck it up, yes? Let's go. Let's go. Are you and I up? With relaunch night upon them, Jack's not only has a new menu to contend with, but a winter storm as well. Cold. This is crazy. It's a winter storm, but it hasn't stopped anybody from coming, and these cars are backed up nearly half a mile. Now, Jack is back, and if this doesn't work on relaunch night, I'll take that rope and hang all three of them over the side. Unbelievable. Fuck me, it's cold. All right, they open this up. Nice, I like that. This is going to keep kids entertained. I know. This, too, you, know, you can tie, you can play. That's something that I like. Yeah, everybody loves the new remodeling we did, so they're having a lot of fun. I did figure eight. I mean, I have a uh, baby bedroom. I'll have the herbal chips. Aaron, uh, turn it up now. Yes, yeah, sir. Turn it up now, yeah? Yes, sir. There's no room for error. I'm the chef. I need to control my brigade. How much? I want my chicken wing. Answer my question. I'm going to do my best to be the strongest chef that I can be here. All right, this has got to go. Okay, steak dish. It's really good. Yeah, chicken is like the best probably I've ever had. With customers clearly excited about the new Jacks, the restaurant fills to capacity, and the kitchen faces a monumental test. OK. Sell me a fish taco. You hear me? Fish taco, how long? Let's go. OK, I can't talk with nobody listening. Come on, guys, answer him, please. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fuck, I'm dying on grill fry here, man. With Aaron still fighting to get his staff on board. All right, so sorry, there's a little bit of a hold up in there. Customers who ordered fried food are getting restless. They know there's a new look, right? Yeah. Now we're waiting for the food. Well, bear with us. It takes a couple minutes for the food, please. How's uh, Chef Aaron doing? Under massive stress. <laughs> yeah, losing his mind. I got food dying. Jesus Christ. These guys are they're, they're, I'm getting buried by Grill Fry. I'm not getting any of their food. Everybody else's food is coming up. They're burying me. Grill Fry's getting beaten, AJ. Bill, I need him to coordinate with me. I need a fish and chip to sell right now. I can't stress enough that AJ, he has 40 years plus experience. Of course, I throw them in the kitchen to help us out. I need two roasted coconut. chickens. Here's coconut shrimp. Where are they? Coconut shrimps. I don't need coconut shrimps. When AJ came back here to help. <laughs> Here's your poor boy. Here you go. Poor boy. What table numbers are you feeding me, AJ? Table 41. Okay, 41? AJ, I sold 41 like 45 minutes ago. OK, never mind. Fuck, man. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, better than that. Better than that. Can't even see him behind the fucking line. Get a box from the snap. I can't see the short ass little fucker. Yeah, hold on. Unbelievable. 243 customers through the door so far. Aaron's backed up in the kitchen. He's asked for help. AJ's gone in there and made it worse. If they're not careful, this place can fucking sink. Now I will see what's holding up those appetizers, OK? Thank you. Coconut shrimp, lead app. How long? You guys are killing me down there. And you're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. We're going to have to slow the seating down. I can't, these guys cannot keep up. I'm hearing, where's my fries? Where's my fish? And then I don't hear, it's up in one minute. I'm up in two minutes. I wasn't hearing nothing. So I was like, screw that. I need that fish taco. Send my Hey, don't talk like that. Give me the food I asked for. I don't need your lift. You busy, I'm busy. Fuck you. I don't want to hear no damn arguing back here. I hear people screaming at each other. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? Excuse me, did I hear an answer? Did I hear a yes? I'd like to hear an answer. You guys are killing me down there. 
anarchy. You're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. With anarchy in the kitchen. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? The former silent partner decided it was time to speak up. I'd like to hear an answer. Yes, sir, sir. All right. That's it. Fucking believable. Scott came back here and he showed that he gave a shit, you know, where before I'd never see Scott. And that actually helped me. Okay, let's go. I'm looking for a fish taco. Hey. Fish taco, thank you. Beautiful. That's nice looking food. With Aaron now finally controlling his kitchen, orders are getting to the customers a lot quicker. All right, I almost have a smile on my face, guys. I'm almost smiling. <laughs> I love it. I love the food, yeah? Keep it yeah. going. Keep it going. Nice. And more importantly, you've got clarity with your fucking brigade. I agree. Salud. There's a new menu. As dinner winds down, thank you guys. There's a problem with the night's final order of onion rings. That look undercooked, way undercooked. Yeah. Chef Aaron clearly follows Gordon's advice and demands quality food and respect from his staff. Martini, what are you doing? Smoking a cigarette? Did you sell those things, those onion rings earlier so you could go do that? No. Go look at them. They're shit, man. All night onion rings have been beautiful. Look at them. Don't touch them. I was in the back going touch to the bathroom, em. man. Touch them. I'll drop them again right now. God damn that shit. It can't happen. Good. Last table of the night, and the food has to be just as good at the end of the night as it is in the beginning. Holding his staff accountable till the last minute, Aaron is finally acting like a head chef. Scott. Yes. Good job with what you did with the kitchen. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I feel my partners realize that, you know what, I can be a benefit here. I enjoy it, yeah. This helped me redeem myself to my partners. I think that Gordon Ramsay saved my friendship, my partnership, and this business. I, for the first time in this restaurant, saw each and every one of the owners working their ass off. None of you were fragmented. It was together. We fixed the biggest problem in Jack's, and that was the food. Now you know what it's like to maintain that. Tama, what's the most important thing you've got out of this week? I got a partner. <laughs> Seriously, the most important thing I got out of this week. What a lovely compliment. And when I first met you, big boy, honestly, I thought your days were numbered. The rumors, the crap, and you've turned it around. We know what we're doing if we put our minds together and we work together. We can fill this place. Absolutely right. There's only one thing. Excuse me? Tamar, I, Bill, we've yeah. all admitted that, you know, we kind of put ourselves out there. AJ never admitted to nothing. You know, a lot of this was his fault. I never said I have no faults, and I did the best I can with all the hours that I put. Let me talk for a second. On that exact point, you are here way too much to be effective. I know you think you're effective. We don't think you're effective at 80 hours a week. AJ, it would be the most generous thing you could do as a father for his son to step back. Cutting back on the hours okay. and cutting back on the pay. Not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. I hope Scott, Bill, and Tamer will see that the hours I put here were needed to run the business. They probably will see it. Maybe on my deathbed, they'll confess it, but not before then. That's hard, that, with that. That yeah? was very see, hard. It, 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 been agonizing over the conversation. It wasn't a personal thing at all. It was, it's needed for him, too. He can't be here that many hours. It's good for everybody. I can't yeah, wait, so yes, so to get back, you yes? You, we're bringing you to the gym when you come back. OK. <laughs> Take care, Gordon. Oh, Thank you. Dear. Good night, guys. Thank you for everything. Keep pumping, yes? Yes, sir. After Gordon left, in the days that followed, Bill, Scott, and Tamara gave Aaron the full authority to run the kitchen, the menu, and the staffing. If you have anybody in here that has to go tonight, you can remove them tonight. Aaron immediately fired two cooks and brought in two experienced sous chefs. They don't know the way it was before, and there will be a new standard set. And the partners realized, although it was difficult, they needed a new general manager to take over Jack's. And so they fired AJ. 
He let it happen, and what is done, he did to that's himself. Right. You're right. I can't You're put right. it on me. You're right. Or no. you. It just sucks that it is, because that's your dad, but you got my support. Firing my dad is what I need for this place to survive, and he's going to back us up on what we need to do, just like any father would that loves their son. We're now moving in the right direction. We actually finally know what we're doing. I think it's awesome. We do three, four right. nights like this, it'll be a breeze back here. Thank you, Gordon. This was an experience of a lifetime. <laughs> the three of us as owners have never been as close as we are right now. Yes, Lisa, how are you? With Dylan's. This is an American Irish restaurant with an Indianness connected to it. It's hard for me to believe that Dylan's has lasted this long. Okay, and you had eight people leave on you, yes? We kind of lurch between catastrophe and disaster. My wife, my family, we started this restaurant to make a new life. But uh, the restaurant is not doing that well. Dylan, good evening. How can I help you? I hired Martin to take care of this business. I had an objective. The idea was to capture the best of all worlds. Where are we choosing from? We have beef buna. Which menu? Lamb chop, shepherd's pie. It's the waves of the future. Hamburgers. Indian diners will be everywhere. <laughs> I think people are a bit confused as to, like, what kind of restaurant this is. I don't know what each manager does specifically. I'm the general manager. I'm the operations manager. And I'm a floor manager here. Nobody really knew Khan was a manager. He doesn't do anything yet. I don't like to work here because everything's so messed up. I think in an ideal world, Martin would be an ongoing character in a reality TV series. Martin. Martin. My responsibilities include uh, an awful lot of things. I make sure that everything runs. If something's broken, I fix it. I make sure that there's toilet paper to wipe your butt with. Frequently, I will have to cook something because the cooks who make the Indian food don't know how to make American food. If we get customers in here, I will walk up to tables, serve them their food, and they'll be swatting flies away. It is disgusting. The kitchen's not clean. The problem has been eradicated now. I think it has. There's a fly. For the last six months, we are losing like twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month. I cannot continue losing money like this. I don't want to continue with this nightmare. I will do anything and everything what Gordon Ramsay asked me to do to make this place as successful. Ironically, Gordon's successful New York restaurant is only two blocks away from this kitchen nightmare. Dylan's, with a canopy all taped out, and what the fuck is that sign there? It's like a scoreboard. Morning. Hello. Gordon Ramsay. Martin, general manager. This is Dylan. Welcome. Dylan's Indian restaurant. Indian restaurant, yes. Doesn't Indian sound cuisine. like an Indian, does it? Dylan's. No. No. Dylan's, no. When I first met Gordon, I assumed to be a fairly intimidating guy, and that's exactly what he was. Mohammed Islam, the owner of the place. Mohammed, how are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Jenna. <laughs> Jenna, nice to see you. Gordon definitely has a presence about him. I don't know whether or not I should be terrified or just relax and go with everything. This is Andrew, operation and manager. General manager, operation manager. Yes. yes. Uh, one rocky table. Trust you to pick the worst table in the house. Let's sit at this table, shall we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK, good. Flies everywhere. Uh, Martin. Yes. Um, we're such a huge menu. Mm. Uh, am I right in thinking there's two kitchens? There's two different chefs in one kitchen. They work alongside each other. British, Italian, Buffalo. Yes. The only thing that's not on here is Chinese. Are you normally this busy for lunch? Oh, actually, it's a little busy today. <laughs> we don't have people coming in because they see an empty restaurant. Sometimes I don't get a table at all. From the main menu, Assorted vegetarian appetizers. And then for main course, the lamb biryani and beef buna. From the American menu, I'll go for the salmon sauce. Please, thank you. You're welcome. God, I'm lonely. I need the appetizers first. Are you okay? 
I'm quite excited to see the reaction. We've got like great service, great food, so it's a win-win situation. The walls are ghastly. Looks like it's been plastered with hospital linen. That's where the customers go after they come out of this restaurant. Of course there's no fucking salmon. Why would there be fucking salmon? When Gordon Ramsay ordered his lunch, he must have looked into a fucking crystal ball because he ordered something that we didn't have. Let me just make sure that I can order something that they don't have. That is great. 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 Frozen fucking fish or a great chef. Right. There's two fritters. Those ones both are vegetable. They're both vegetable? Yes. May the Lord above not poison me. Amen. In terms of beauty, it's not exactly an Indian classic, is it? It looks like it's a dehydrated turd. There's meat in there. Um, that one's got meat in there. It's not vegetarian. It tastes like lamb. If he were a vegetarian, I would expect a lawsuit. It's going to be fun to ask them about. You guys are killing me right now. The sorted vegetarian appetizer plate has to be vegetarian. Vegetarian? He just had a meat one. <laughs> Lock on wood, the worst is over, all right? OK. This is beef puna. Beef puna. And lamb biryani. Lamb biryani. And she's bringing a plate for you. Thanks, darling. Would you, uh, would you mind getting me a clean one, please? Sorry. What the fuck is that? It always worries me when they stick tomato roses on top of food and when the tomato is rotten. Piece of beef. Does that look like a piece of beef to you, my darling? It's dry. It looks like pork. And if that's beef, then hey, I was born in Bangladesh. Gomez? Yeah. He says to try this. It's Wait. pork. Wait. Pretty sure it's pork. Is it beef? It is lamb. Pork. No. Yeah. It was lamb. <laughs> so now it was lamb. Gordon didn't seem to enjoy much of anything, and that's how it usually goes with customers. Where do you start on this one? Potatoes are sick, Martin. They look like they were cooked at least a week ago. Well, that's good. And frozen salmon, too. And you, that's good. You have come to the rescue once again. One of the greatest chefs in the world wants something to eat, and I had to make it. Thank you. So this is from the American kitchen. Looks like a doormat. Another fly. Huh? Is this normal? Um, yes, it is. Who made this? Um, I did. So you're the operations manager. You're yes. The chef as well. Yes. We haven't got any other chefs in the back that can cook this food. They don't know how to cook any Western-style food. Can you do me a favor? Yes. Either. Not with pleasure. Pretty much everything that could go wrong went horribly and catastrophically wrong. Oh, God. Kellis Juice. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Gordon, tell him in a really nice way. Yeah. Your food is shit. Last time your food was shit, person to call Food was bland, old fashioned. I've eaten it. I don't feel too good. What do you lamb are What do you give each the shit on the dinner? What it says that uh, that lamb is probably the old lamb. You serve me old lamb. I am embarrassed to see the situation. Oh, that's not a mistake, I guess, sir. Yeah. They get a little nervous as they made a mistake in there. Made a mistake? Maybe the standard cotton has a very high compared to mine. I didn't expect it's going to go that bad. After Gordon's lunchtime fiasco, he now tries to understand how this restaurant is managed. No, I'm not worthy of sparkling water. I have to have tap water here. Are we going to reset this table? Eeny, meeny, mine and mo. Catch your manager by the toe. You are what? Floor. You're the floor manager. Floor manager. Holy mackerel. When I came to work, I was nervous, but at the same time, I was happy because I had a chance to work with Chef Ramsay. That's why you are here. <laughs> so you can fix the place. You think it's that funny and easy to do? Everybody here hates Khan, and I can't fire the guy because he's protected by Muhammad. Now, we have a floor manager, operations manager, and general manager. 
I was resting, just thinking of various things I've got to sort out. And one of the waitresses was rubbing my hair. It was a natural thing. How many managers does this place need? I found a new manager. We now have a floor manager, and amongst the operation manager, that's managed by the general manager. Three fucking managers, and they're all shit. Dear, oh dear. With a better understanding of the staff structure, it's time for Gordon to see the staff in action at a dinner service. Welcome. Nice to see you all. Are you used to looking over the menu? Well, we were just sort of debating yeah. whether we wanted something on the American side yeah. or on the Indian side. The Indian's very good. Where are we choosing from? Which menu? It's also becoming clear to Gordon that the multiple styles of menu is not a positive, but a negative. Well, I'm just going to go with my gut. I'll get the same thing. Yeah. I'll get the non please. <laughs> OK, you ready? OK, Farouk. Oh, fucking holy Moses. Oh, dear. Fuck me. Lift it off the floor and don't put it on the floor. Hello, madam. Floor manager, operations manager, general manager. Anybody? Mohammed, can you explain to Gomez? Yes. Yeah? That we've got to stop putting things on the floor. Yes? It's unhygienic. Unhygienic and it could be dangerous too. It's very dangerous. Yes. Dear, dear, dear. It's 40 minutes into the service and unbelievably, no food has left the kitchen. My first table still hasn't gotten their entree. I just want to understand what's taking so long for all this food. One of the major reasons for the delay kitchen chaos. This is the first yeah. table in this restaurant, and they're just... But they're already, already done. No. I only give him that the salad. Who's in charge here? I'm taking over expediting here. You're expediting? Yes. Mohammed, what are you doing in here? I'm trying to help them up. You've got three managers, two chefs, eight girls out the front, and no one yeah. can fucking delegate. Oh, my God. OK, kids, one order of salmon left. One salmon special. Let everybody know. And when information is shouted from the kitchen, Martin is busy again, not with customers, but with his phone. Oh, my god. OK, that has to be ready before this goes up. Ultimately, Martin doesn't belong in a leadership position. Tell the manager on the floor to do something about it. This place is running in chaos. It's totally dysfunctional. And there needs to be leadership here. So what are you cooking tonight? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Get me the general manager, Martin, please. All right. Not your Martin! Gordon Ramsay was really getting under my skin. OK, right. Uh, this young man's here. He's standing here, and he hasn't got anything to cook. Is this how you run a place? No, I don't, I don't run a place like this, all right? Why did it take me to let you know that he's standing there playing with radishes? Because, um... I You're busy. That's a horrible thing to say, but I was busy at the front there, yes. Oh, right. He was alluding to my relationship with the waitresses. Yeah, you get off on it. Girl stroking your hair, <laughs> massaging your fucking ego. You're such a fake. I'm not fake, I'm just... Why, why are you saying I'm a fake? You've got members of your team standing here getting paid doing fuck all. I've never met a general manager so shit as you. Okay. If this was your money, would you let him stand here playing with no. his dick? That's what you're doing here, isn't it? You're riding Mohammed, you know. You're skinning that poor man. Yes, you fucking are. You're taking advantage of a weak, rich man. That's what's just fucking clicked in my mind. He got personal. He was accusing me of riding Mohammed, this type of thing. And that got me, because how the hell have you got the right to say something to me that you don't even know me? We've got more staff than customers tonight, and we still can't get it fucking right. General manager. General Toss Park. What is going on back there? This is seriously the worst service I've ever had to say. An hour and a half into dinner service, and only a few dishes have made their way to customers, who are not exactly thrilled with Dylan's dining experience. This is raw, though. So. Thank you very much. I don't like eating with flies swarming around me. And those who haven't received food are getting ready to leave. In two minutes, we're leaving. And, you know, we ask, like... Seriously, two minutes, we're leaving. What else I can do for you right now so that will make you happy? Tell me that. Food. You tell me. Food. I'm sorry, ladies. Or I can discount your bill. You can go. This is ridiculous. 
It's day two, and Gordon has already been appalled by the food and dismayed by the inadequate management. Time to do the thing I've been dreading most, yeah? Getting into the kitchen. I am not looking forward to this part. When were these changed last? Uh, that one, he... Well, at least the no. flies look fresh. Oh, my god. I have no idea why is the flies. There was a lot of flies here. What is that? I don't know what it is. You don't know? Moldy. That is, quite frankly, the worst hamburger I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, my god. These were my fucking potatoes for lunch. Will you do me a favor? Yes. Either. Thank God I sat the little fucker down to eat them. That's not a potato. Green chicken. What goes on down here? What's that smell? For it's God's it's sake! It's Look at that! Look! Cockroaches. Holy shit! Oh, my God. That is the worst hamburger I've ever seen in my entire life. Having discovered the terrible conditions in the kitchen, Gordon now ventures down to the basement of the restaurant to check out what's lurking below. What's that smell? What? What is that? Is that for rats or mice? No. Food for the catch of that. So we have got rats here. Rat is all over the place. It's rat droppings. Look at them all, everywhere. Rats. Rats. Oh, my good God. Look at the cockroaches. Oh, my God, look. I've got one in my fucking hair. It's cockroaches. Box is full of them. Look. Look at them all. Oh, my God, look. There they are, there. In refrigeration. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Look at that! Oh, my God. Look at them. There you go. There you go. I was shocked. It's like a nightmare. Look, Mohammed. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even a pepper. It's rotten. And I'm worried about the flies in the dining room. I know where they're fucking breeding now. Look at it! <laughs> I've eaten here! Come on! Martin! Uh, we all miss you. Hopefully see you soon. Take care. Bye. OK. Yeah, I need Martin urgently. He's a general manager, yes? Yeah, good. You're, you're needed right now. I'm needed right now? Yes. Needed in the kitchen urgently. Are you in charge of this? Are you responsible for this? That is the salad I had. Lunchtime. I open the bag and bang, out comes the flies. Uh, gentlemen, it gets worse than that. It's green. It's beyond edible. It's disgusting. Look at the color of those chicken wings. Everything in there was putrid. How long has that been in there? Can Give I... me an answer, because yes. I'm shitting myself. Yes, uh, there's a head chef responsible for this, trying to this rectify it. This will kill somebody. We're not passing the buck, but... I know my general manager knows what the fuck's going on in my fridges. Where are your standards? Our standards Look were... at it. Let me just tell you something. Yes. I've eaten here. Where's that from? The... That's been sliced. That's gone out. What is that? Where's it? Hey, madam, where's that tomato gone? Look! It's fucking rotten, you fucking idiot. It's rotten! Has a customer just been served a slice of tomato? No, 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 no. So where is it? Oh, my God. Things are looking pretty glum. Look, 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 look. It's rotten, Mohammed. Tell him in your language he'll kill somebody. What do we need, a death in the restaurant before some fucker gets a grip? How many tables are out there? There's three. Three. You tell those three tables this is the luckiest day of their fucking life, OK? The only thing worse than having tables sent away is knowing that what I was going to serve them 
could make them sick. No one is getting served from this fucking restaurant tonight. Let's make that clear. Yes or no? Anyone against that? No. No. Good. That didn't go down too well. He was extremely angry, extremely pissed off. We are not ever again serving any of this food. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Can you go and tell them that the kitchen is closed right now? Out there and tell them the truth. Tell them now. Gordon was so outraged, so angry. I've never seen anything like it. From green burgers to fucking furry cucumber to fucking rancid potatoes. Out there. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry to inform you that we are not going to be serving dinner this evening. Chef Ramsay's shut down the kitchen. It's just disgraceful. I feel terrible that it's gotten to this point. I'm fucking speechless. It is a nightmare. This is so horrible. I should close down this place. This is worse than a nightmare. Gordon has encountered one of the most disgusting kitchens he has ever seen. Oh, my God. And so he must take serious action. Let's go. Fuck us. I want these guys to know I mean fucking business. A clean means a proper clean. Right, you dirty little fuckers, where are you? just looking at him and thinking. OK, when I say clean, I mean clean, yeah? Guys, let's go. These guys are professional steam cleaners, yeah? Guys, kitchen straight through there. It wasn't just cleaners, it was cleaners plus. They're dressed like people from Star Wars, for God's sake. And you guys are doing it with them, yeah? Oh, God. Phase one of Gordon's mission, to seek out and destroy all moldy, rotten, and contaminated foods. We've got work to do. The next phase of Operation Sterilize, steam clean every square inch of the kitchen. Now it's time to enlighten Mohammed and his managers with a little trip, a couple of blocks away to the kitchen of Gordon's New York restaurant. OK, I want to show you something. The difference between night and day. This is a kitchen. Have a look around. All kitchens should be like this. Gordon's kitchen is absolutely spectacular. No matter what size restaurant you are, you can keep a clean shop and you can keep it organized. Open the fridge door, Martin. We went to the London. That was a walk of shame. Twice a day, these fridges are cleaned. This is heaven. That was hell. In order to reach out to the local Indian community and New Yorkers at large, Gordon has come up with his strategy for the menu, contemporary Indian cuisine. Does he know we're in Broadway? Where are we? New Jersey. No, no, no. New Jersey? No, 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 oh, no, 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 fuck no, no, me. No, no, no. Well, yeah, he doesn't even know we're in this fucking New York. We are in New York restaurant, can I? Right. With the salmon, we're going to make a bit of a broth. Right. With coconut and tomatoes and onions. Right. The secret behind the scallop is nice and pink. It's okay. sweet. A little bit of curry powder. Yes? Yes. And then from there, just sit it on top of the chutney. Pan seared scallops, a walnut right. chutney, wonderful crispy salmon with a tomato, coconut, curry broth. He just opened my eyes to what can be done. Clean, modern way to serve Indian food. Very good. Look at me. Oh, jeez, give a cut off. Fucking hell. Okay, very, very good. Tell him he's only a scallop, yeah? We haven't lost our children. OK, OK, he can let go now. He can let go now? He can let fucking go now. OK, good. To help execute Gordon's menu makeover, he has enlisted the help of one of the top Indian chefs in New York City, Vikas Khanna. Good to see you, buddy. Are you well? I need you here to work with the team of chefs 
and to get this place back on the map. Yeah. It's a beautiful location. We are in the heart of Manhattan. We can do it here. Later in the night, Gordon's design team is brought in to dramatically transform the restaurant's interior and exterior. It's a new day. The tacky electronic sign is being removed, and the restaurant is given an authentic Indian name, Purnima, which means full moon. Follow me, let's go. Here we go. There we are, all blindfolded. Much to our chagrin, I'll tell you. OK, on the count of three, take off your blindfolds. One, two, three. Welcome. Wow. Haven't they done an amazing job? Great job, amazing job. Ma'am, have a look from down here. It's like now you feel wow. you're here. Wow. What a difference. Isn't it beautiful? Beautiful. It has a nice, clean, crisp look. It looks now like it's been done by professionals the way it should. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Isn't it lovely? I'm happy to come into work now and not see the material. It's so much more than I thought it'd be. New chairs. New banquettes, new linen, new pictures, and it looks like something that is classic, yes? He just turned this restaurant from zero to 100. We're going to go outside and have a quick look outside. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Oh, my god. god. Stand back a little bit. There's no confusion. The color's beautiful. Yes. I'm not going to miss that sign. And I'm so glad to have it gone. It looks like a real restaurant again. <laughs> the amazing job. After working through the night, Vikas is ready to present the new menu he designed with Gordon. The old menu has been replaced with classic Indian dishes that have a modern twist. Everything is done very simple according to American palate. I didn't know that. Indian food like that existed. Kerala fisherman's curry, OK? That's a very basic curry. We move to the next dish. We have kadai shrimp here. After the trio, we have the chicken kurma. We are using saffron, real saffron, for this flavor. Mr. Vikas is so cute. He is a magician to me. And then Gordon's recipe of saffron cauliflower. The menu reflects these values of freshness in food, vibrant flavors, and it's very approachable for everyone. With the kitchen, menu, and decor all in good shape, it's time for Gordon to turn his attention back to the staff. Big, big, big night. Yes, this place is about to be relaunched properly. Tonight, it has to work. OK, what's your role for tonight, general manager? I'm in front of house. Um, I'll be meeting, greeting. Will you do me a favor? When the customers sit down, will you not sort of be so false when you jump on? Just sometimes I feel it's so in your face, it's intimidating for them. OK. Yeah. 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 Watching your performance, I was like, tacky. Will you promise to keep your phone off in the middle of service? Will you down. promise to be attentive to staff needs when necessary? Yeah. Will you attempt to act as a general manager for the first time ever stepping into this business? Yeah? I like like I always Will do, yes. Will you not yes. take it as your cafe and hangout area? That is a great morale booster before the opening of this amazing new restaurant. Will you actually treat it as a business? If you could try to make some yeah. improvement this evening, please. Yeah. Martin is not qualified for a GM. I don't see the confidence that he need. Martin's not full of shit. OK. You're giving him such a hard time, and yep. it's making me angry. I'm frustrated for the, the lack of respect this man has. That's with him, not with you. So would you mind keeping your nose out of my business? Don't try and interrupt me. Excuse me, this is a loyal worker. Then. Oh, here loyal we go. Worker. No, I'm sorry. Here we go. You don't need your minion to try and convince me how good you are on the back of what I've experienced. Is that clear? Martin, please. Gordon, help us to achieve that one. An amazing are, job. Yes. yes. Let's prove ourselves we do the job right. Absolutely, definitely. And then we see this. Gordon, we did it. Thank you, Mohammed. I've been waiting for that for the last week. I'm really pleased that it came out. So now I want to see positivity from everybody. Absolutely everybody. And if there's anyone who doesn't think they can pull on the rope like that, look for a new job. It's the morning of relaunch, and Gordon has organized a plan to spread the word in Manhattan. 
It's a Pornima parade. Look at that. Wow, what a brilliant idea of uh, promoting Pornima restaurant. Off we go, and we'll jump on, yes? It's amazing. The girls, music, and the promoting ideas, all of them. Yeah, I love it, I love you. I'm Thank glad you. you're happy now. People were asking where the restaurant is, and it was nice to be able to do something together. We needed that more than anything because I think all of our spirits were so broken. Oh, Indian Burning restaurant! It's so romantic! All of a sudden, you've all come alive, my God! <laughs> it's only two hours to go until the doors open, and the restaurant is booking up. The future of Purnima rests greatly on tonight's reopening. Yes, I understand that, absolutely. For Muhammad, tonight is a golden opportunity, but he needs his staff to rise to the occasion. Hello, good evening. I will say this table right here. I've got a table right here for you. It is very exciting to see this restaurant at full again. The kitchen is under the strong leadership of Vikas. So he's going to bring the food. But Gordon will be keeping an eye on the general manager, Martin. Advertisers, everybody takes a hand. The success of Purnima depends on the teamwork. That's the crucial point of running Purnima. Uh, Martin. Yep. Give me the phone. Is it on? It's off. It's off. It's off. It's off. OK. Yes, sir. You ready for order? Some samosas, some scallops, and some chicken tikka. Yeah. One chicken tikka trio. This is the new star for Pranima. New decor, new menu, contemporary fresh, and how exciting. It's all fresh, all new, and wonderful. Everything's just going perfectly well, but shit, Martin's still here. Excellent. Nice atmosphere in the dining room. Nice atmosphere. It's the best of the Very good. Customers are responding well to the new menu, and the first wave of orders is now hitting the kitchen. Let's go. I need one lamb chop, medium rare, please. Piping hot, please. Take this, take this. We've got to turn some customers tonight. We've got to turn tables, yeah? It's good. It's really great. Cauliflower is great. But the chicken tikka was good. But as the orders start to pile in, Martin's lack of managerial skills start to show. So that they want the lamb, Who? Uh, the ladies, the, yeah. And the wait staff becomes confused. Yeah. Can you give it to that table? That Service, please. Can somebody take this, please? Which is causing disorder in the kitchen, and everything is starting to back up. Martin, Khan, the food's sitting here, no one's moving their ass, yes? It's I getting cold and cold and cold. Oh, my God. How'd that happen? I need another rice, please. Service, get me Martin, please, yeah? Quickly, yeah? Excellent. Everyone's standing in it. Donna, can you get out the rice, please? Martin, could you sweep the rice, then? We're rather everyone standing in it, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be nice to do something, yeah? So we don't have to send more food to the rats? That's great. Finally found a job. Oh, fucking hell. Even on a night with a top chef at the helm, Martin's mismanagement of his waiters has caused problems in the kitchen, and the customers are paying the price. The bread was the best part. Oh, yeah, the bread was the best part. It's the only thing that was warm. It's unbelievable. It's cold. It forgot our order. I'm surprised none of the food came out warm. It's a nightmare. OK, we're now just starting to turn these first tables, but panic set in. Customers are complaining about food being cold. And these staff are not used to being busy, especially like this. Cold, yeah, let's go. It's cold, cos it's fucking lying around. Just take this, please. Service, please. I never served as many customers before. Who's running the restaurant? Martin! Go on, yeah. Somebody ordered this 33. I'm not going to say anything negative about the restaurant, but I don't understand this restaurant. Let's go. On there you go, rather than a big tray. Right, where are you going? What table? What was that for? Bacchus. Bacchus? Vikas. I don't think that, that Martin understands what a general manager really should be doing. Don't make any phone calls along the way. Straight to the table. 
Why is that rice going cold now? Why isn't that be served? No, it's, it's actually burning, yes. It went out it's actually burning. I want the customer to experience it hot, not your yes, hand. No, no, Customers are complaining hot. about the food cold, my man. You put the meal out just now. I believe Gordon's trying to get me angry, tired, annoyed or whatever, and I wasn't taking any part with that. Um, Gordon has seen enough of Martin's managerial incompetence and believes he may have found a solution. Be honest with me. Can you manage this place? Yes, I can. So stop blending in and yes. stand on your feet, OK? Yes, I can do that. I will try my best to convince Chef Ramsey that I can run this restaurant. Ready, guys? Ready, everything is ready, but I have one naan. One, one naan. One minute, one minute. I have right, to put... All right, just do that. All right, just... No, no, no. I have to put... That's it. That's OK. That's OK. Relax. With Khan taking the reins, food is finally making it out to the customers. Good man. Thank you. Excellent. Pour the water, use the tray, take it to the down there. Each and every time, and table 44 need their all. Check. Perfect. All the best, brother. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Definitely try that. This is great. That's it, like a yeah. cup rice? Yeah. With Khan in the dining room and Vikas in the kitchen, the restaurant is beginning to run smoothly. It was a very, very good experience for me and my whole team, and then make me feel good. One, two, three. Tonight, I made over $100. I was so happy. Make sure you guys come back again, OK? Yeah. Take care. Thank you. The grand opening of Purnima was bumpy in the middle, but finished on a high note. Uh, Mohammed, have a quick review, please. However, Gordon knows his work is not done. This place can be phenomenal. The location is extraordinary. This is a new start. Exactly. You have to treat it as a new beginning. Of course. I mean, in a perfect world, I would sacrifice one of your managers to employ Vikas. You cannot carry driftwood in your no. business. Out of the three managers, one has to go. Between you and I, Martin has an amazing way of manipulating you. And he's not worth his weight in terms of what he brings to the table. Hearing Gordon Ramsay say that to Mohammed, that makes me upset and angry. The frustration just boiled over. Can I make this year? Tonight, yeah. tonight Mohammed, yeah. I've never used you, I, yeah. I've respected you, yeah. I'm proud of what we've done. I've never cheated you. Excuse and me. I take what, what, what's, what's going on? Oh, you ask him no, manage, for, for, for managing me. You're not recommending me. You're not recommending me. You are you're, you're, enough. Just, I've had enough. Okay. Because okay, you've been insulting. Uh, you've been accusing me of achieving this bad. Did you hear what I just said to him? Marvin. So. Yeah, let, let, let him go. Go on. Get it out. No, I'm Get off your chest. But you have, the first uh, time since I met you, show me that you're a man. You've accused me of riding on this why man's you, shoulders. Why are you pointing like that? Because, not I, because like I'm him. angry, OK? You want to see passion? Good. I'm giving you passion. This person I've respected. Yeah. And you've had the audacity to accuse me of, like, taking his money... Riding off his back. Riding off his back yeah. is, 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 is what you've said. Well, that is disgusting. You have no right. You don't know that. What about no. you? What about, what about you? I have nothing to be guilty of. You what? Nothing. You sat in it. It's rotten! Yeah. You ran it. You sat in it. Yes. You wasted it. Yes, I wasted it. Yes. You encouraged it. You it wasn't always go. like this. We, it it, it spiraled, this it spiraled yeah. out of control. Yeah. And I you asked you guilty. to come on board. I'm glad. Not guilty, Mohammed. I'm not guilty. You I have right. nothing to be guilty of. You what? Nothing. You sat in it. Yeah. You ran it. You sat in it. Yes. You wasted it. Yes, I wasted yeah, it. Yes. You encouraged it. You this wasn't this always go. like this. We, it it, it spiraled. Go it shit. spiraled out of control. Yeah. And I asked Feeling you to guilty. come on board. I'm glad. Not guilty, Mohammed. I not guilty. I'm not going to take this put down anymore. You have nothing to be guilty of. Listen, this is my last night. And you said it was your last night. I'm confused. Yes. Yes, this so is my last now. night. Why this is my me? last tonight. OK, please tell the owner, not me. This is my last night. I'm out of here. I quit. Jesus Christ. When Martin left, actually, I'm just shocked. I didn't expect it's going to go that bad. I think Gordon Ramsay is full of piss. And I'm extremely angry, extremely pissed off. And I now turn my back and walk away. With the success of the relaunch and the change of management, Purnima has beaten the odds and is now looking to a bright future.
In the following days, Purnima's contemporary Indian food and atmosphere continued to generate great buzz throughout New York City. I would say that this chicken tikka masala would rival any chicken tikka masala in India. How did you like it, Whitney? It was really good. The restaurant's revenue increased, and naturally so did the server's tips. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Chef Vikas accepted an offer from Mohammed to be the restaurant's ongoing consultant. I will help I... you at any limit, at any extent. Very good. Thanks a lot. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's be honest. It's gone exceptionally well. Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Great food, great decor, great buzz, happy customers. I really mean it. Thank you. Bloody good job. Yes. I'm very happy with the changes Gordon has made here. He has given this place an opportunity to thrive and be a real restaurant. For all of us over here, I thank you very, very much. Listen, you're very welcome. You've got all the tools, now do it. Go stop working hard. Gordon did what I thought was completely impossible with the restaurant. Khan? My experience with Chef Gordon was wonderful. I get the confidence that we can run this business, that we can run this restaurant successfully. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> 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 pull him back, pull him back. Excellent. Good to see you. Thank you. Neighbors. Yes. Next time, I'm coming to eat. I'm not coming to work. Yes. Okay? Yes. Good to You're see welcome. you. I'd like to thank Chef Ramsey for being a part of this great success. Before, I thought he's crazy, but he said, no, he's a very passionate man. I like that very much. Excellent. Good on, guys. Thank you, Richard Lee. Thank you. Stand strong. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, what a transformation. I honestly didn't think we could turn this around to this extent from what I saw my first day here. My God. New York City, restaurant capital of the world, home to thousands of restaurants vying to be the crown jewel of the city. Try this one, ladies. The Black Pearl just being one. Started by two friends as a small downtown lobster shack, they moved to Midtown, added a third partner, and hoped to become the premier lobster restaurant in Manhattan. I suggested to Brian that we put an ad in the paper to find uh, an investor since we didn't want to spend any of our own money. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. I met Greg and thought that he would be a perfect match. Gentlemen, fish and chips. Well, it was David's concept. And um, I thought the concept was really very good. And I thought it would make some pretty good money. Did we get that 2,500? Because I'm about four grand short of payroll. The problem started when we started to run low on money. It became very frustrating around here. Brian and Greg and I stopped speaking. We would try to communicate via email, text messaging, and everybody got nervous and frustrated. This place is a nightmare for the lack of management. We don't have one voice. Well, I just asked Brian, and he's like, yeah, well, you guys can figure it out. Can we always Thanks. figure it out. Well, I know. Because they don't tell us what to do. I think Brian's more of a silent partner. If he had a choice, he'd probably just not have to work here at all. This table had a hair in their fries. I don't want to deal with this. You deal with it. Greg is the hardest working owner, but he doesn't make a decision. Who Brian. the fuck put these letters on here? I couldn't tell you. Out of the three owners, I like David the least because his ego tends to get in the way of a healthy atmosphere. Don't touch the tickets, please. The main problem with the Black Pearl is these guys are really stubborn, and if Gordon Ramsay can help us all kind of mesh together, then this place can be phenomenal. New York City, one of the most difficult places ever to open a restaurant. I opened mine 14 months ago, and I've been busting my balls ever since. I'm dying to see how the Black Pearl are doing. Right, the Black Pearl. Here you go. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Good. And you are? Nigel. Nigel. My name's Stephen. Stephen, how are nice you? We here at the Black Pearl desperately need Gordon's help. We need him to come in and kind of whip all of the owners into shape. How's business? Could be better. But with three owners, and all three of them being over the business, they must be here, what, three or four times a week each, together? No, they're never here together, no. They're never here together? No. Is that one of the owners? Yes, sir. Yes, Excellent. Hi. What's your name? David Leonard. David, Gordon, nice to see you. You are? One of the three owners. One of the three owners. And are you hands-on or hands-off? Hands-on. Hands-on. And how many days a week are you here? I do three or four. Three or four. Okay, good. 
I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat, maybe start off with a uh, little bowl of chowder, and then maybe have a chat after. I'll be around. When I walked in and first uh, met Gordon, I thought he seemed a bit confrontational. That was not very pleasant. But otherwise, I really had no impression of him. I'll be back with some water for you. Excellent. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. I like your enthusiasm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> what a weird bar. And when you look at the bizarre concoction of the interior, it does confirm that three different people, the owners, of course, decorated it. Oh, right. Wow, that was quick. Now, how many's in the kitchen? How many people? Yeah. Uh, three. Three. There you go. Well, thank you. That smells lovely. Did you need more time to look at the menu, or did you um, No, I'll order now, actually. You know that. Um, um, I'll go for a uh, muscle Bangkok. All right. A mac and cheese lobster, please. And then I'll finish with a lobster roll. If you're looking for the most popular one, it'd be the Maine and the Connecticut. So I'll bring you three of them. All three? All right. Will do. Thank you so much. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> no, you are. Just making sure if you need anything, just yell. If anything's bad, I didn't do it, though, so I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> What was your name? Michael? No. What? Your name? Ha, huh, very funny. Ha, <laughs> huh, you're a kidder. <laughs> when Chef Ramsay joked around with me, I think it added that personal spark of, oh, you know, Chef Ramsay isn't this evil devil that everybody sees him as. Well, the same top, first course. OK, then a lobster mac and cheese after, after that. Cheese. OK. And he has a chowder right now. Mm. A little bit watery for chowder, huh? What a shame. Hello, Chef. How are you? Oh, very well indeed. Thank you. Are you You're Muscles Bangkok. I'm Greg. One the of the owners. Oh, one of the no, owners. No, no, I'm not the chef. Trust okay. me. No, you don't want to eat my food. What a way to come from. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Thank too, you. sir. So there's one more owner to come. Yes, yeah. Brian. So David, Brian, and Greg. Whew. OK, great. Lovely. <laughs> All <right>. Confusing. <laughs> uh, thank you. Go ahead. Burn your mouth off. My god. Fuck me, that's hot. Lobster mac and cheese. Oh, excellent. Lobster mac and cheese. Wow. Thank you. Speak of the devil, and I'll oh, let you enjoy it. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Yeah. Yourself? Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. Yes. Yeah. How did three of you come to run a restaurant? Originally, David and I had the place uh, down on Avenue Way, and then we decided to get out of there. Fascinating. Okay, I'm going to tuck into my uh, mac and cheese with lobster. Okay, thank you. It gets more and more complicated. I'm figuring we send out all three lobster rolls on separate plates, dressed just like they would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So far, he doesn't like much. What do you mean? Food-wise. The mussels can't taste of mussels because of stupid Thai curry Bangkok broth. Mac and cheese, it's chewy and rich. And the chowder, that watery, it's not how a seafood restaurant should run. This is not going to be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is the Connecticut, or the hot lobster roll. OK. Your, this is the main lobster roll. Main no. lobster roll. Whoops. Connecticut, Sorry. main, don't worry about that. And this is the New York City lobster roll. New York City. Yes. Connecticut, main. Gotcha. All righty. Uh, that's great, thank you. All right, let's start off with CT. Drawn butter. <laughs> Horrible. Soaking wet bread. It's like eating a fucking wet diaper. So sorry, Connecticut, but I am moving on. Lobster's not seasoned. Bland. What a shame. All right, so what did, what did you think of the main? Pretty piss poor, to be honest. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Stephen. What's up? Well, he likes Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. That's his boy. Is he still here? Yeah, he's still upstairs. What's he doing? He's eating. He had uh, three lobster rolls, three different kinds. He had mac and cheese. He had um, Bangkok. David wants to know, is he paying for this? You should definitely give yeah, him a check. Yeah, give him a check. check. I can see that. That'll be fun, huh? After tasting the supposedly best food on the menu... How are you? Gordon gathers the three owners and head chef, Phil. Who oversees the food? I do. The award-winning lobster roll. Bread, soggy. Lobster bland. Do you not season it? Salt, pepper, when you bind it with mayonnaise? No. No. Why not? Well, we get most of our recipes and our ideas from Maine, and it's not the way it's done. Well, they have salt in Maine. I've, I've lived in Maine for three months. I know it very well. Chef Ramsay didn't like our lobster roll, and he said he's lived in Maine for three months. But if he'd lived in Maine for three months, he'd know that a lobster roll is exactly the way we make it. I'm really nervous now. I've never known a chef that's not allowed to season his food. Is this man your chef, or is he your puppet? No, he's my chef. David has this tone of being condescending and knowing it all. 
How much debt have we got over the house? Quarter mil? Yeah. Yeah. Who has the final say? If one of us presents an idea, we vote on it, and we decide whether we want to go forward with it or not. Is it hard running a business with three partners? It's hard for us, yeah. When was the last time all three of you sat down? We have not, we have not done so. OK. I don't feel that any of you are committed to making this work. Have we fallen out? Oh, yeah, a couple of three times, yeah. So that's yeah. why we don't meet? Yeah. OK. Who fell out with who? Oh, I get mad at them. Why? Because uh, I don't think they're doing what they need to do. And we feel exactly the same about him, of course. Yeah. I felt that Gordon was right about many things, but I think he jumped to conclusions and that we are not committed to Black Pearl. A restaurant run by three passionate owners, no chance. Brian, he works two days a week. David, well, I don't trust him one little inch. And as for Greg, well, he's pissed off with both of them. Basically, in a nutshell, sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. Who am I? Snow fucking white? After a frustrating conversation with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to take a look at how the Black Pearl operates during a dinner service, especially on a night that all three owners are there. Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. The chowder's good. The fancy calamari salad. It's really good, I promise. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. Where's that fisk, Phil? Call me right now, David. I got a crab cake, it's getting cold. Two lobster rolls and a fried shrimp to beef. Uh, the, the shrimp rolls aren't ready yet. What happened with that? I don't have a fried french fries. So when you and Brian are here together on the same day, Brian takes care of the We're never here together the same day. Oh, you never here? Oh, OK. Yeah, it was weird having David in here expediting because he doesn't normally do that. And having someone on this side of the line that knows what they're doing is key. Do we have one more crab cake? No, no, I, you sold the last one. Oh, that's it. We don't have it. Oh, my god. That's cool. Hey, how are you guys doing? I believe this may be raw. <laughs> What's wrong? Undercooked. Undercooked. That way we're deep fat frying it. This can't be normal, but surely to show. I need an order of fried shrimp. This one was undercooked. What? Are you kidding me? David's lack of experience on the pass is resulting in lack of quality control. They wanted these two well done. Zap them. I'm fucking believing it. Zap them. What's that? Four fuck ups already with them? I think it was a competition amongst the three owners to try and prove to Chef Ramsay that they knew what they were doing. And I felt Greg kind of felt out of his element because he's normally in the kitchen. I'll take this back and we'll do something about the muscles. Okay. We got sand in the muscles. There's supposed to be sand in the steamers. That's why they get a fucking bra. I don't know, guys. So if people don't know what the fuck they're ordering, what are they ordering? David's definitely a know-it-all, and he can be a little rude. What table is that? Table eight. Thank you. Hi. You had the uh, clam bake, and there was a problem with the mussels or the steamers? Both. They're terribly sand. Yeah, there should be sand in the steamer. There often is, and that's why you have the broth to dip them in. So what would you like instead of those? Uh, nothing. In fact, I'll just eat the lobster. I'm fine. Okay, it'll be right out. We uh, just reprimanded. I do not think that Chef Ramsay likes David because Chef Ramsay has a bullshit detector, and David can be full of it sometimes. What happened? Thanks, Chef. No, they're done. They're done. Yeah, they just didn't like it. Jesus Christ. That's the funniest fish and chips I've ever seen in my life, you know that? What happened? I just smell inside there, mm. will you, please? Phil, two seconds. This smells all right to me. It's from the sea. What do you smell, Phil? It smells old. Why didn't they eat it? I don't know, Gordon. Yeah, do you ever ask yourself that question? I don't. I ask I suppose, myself that question all the time. I suppose you actually don't give a fuck, you know that? I do give a fuck, and you know I give a fuck. You seem a very relaxed man with your restaurant. What do you want me to do? I disagree. It doesn't smell bad to me, the fish. I've just given a piece to your chef. Yeah. The piece was stinking. It wasn't stinking. You're blind, my friend. No. If you're not blind, you're fucking clueless. You know that. Now the owner said it's not stinking. It is fragrant, fresh, and perfect. That's why it came back, right? Massage his ego. Concerned about the quality control of the food yeah, show me around. and the truthfulness of the owner, Gordon wants to do a little investigating. They're all from Maine. These are uh, Maine, some from Canada. They look Canadian lobsters to me. Yeah, these are Canadian. Yeah. So the Canadian lobsters are always a lot cheaper. I use the Canadian lobsters for raviolis and tagliatelles and spaghetti, but they're not Maine lobsters. After a disappointing dinner service comes to an end, Gordon is ready to share some of his initial observations. Tough day today. 
and I'm, um, I'm deeply concerned. I see a ship here that is rudderless, and maybe that was the first time that all three of you were working inside this restaurant in a long time. Tonight showed. When was the last time you expedited? All the time I'm back there. You were not, you're not really back there as much as you I'm, were back there tonight. No, no, I've never, because it's never been that, we've never had the whole line up, the whole line with tickets, ever. David, can you stop being a slippery eel for 15 minutes in front of your team and answer the fucking truth? Gordon, the fucking truth is that yes. I'm back there when it's busy every fucking night that I work. I think a lot of what Chef Ramsay's had to say about David was fairly true. I don't believe that David shows that he cares. OK, I've, uh, I've seen enough today. I've got to go and start really seriously fucking understanding, you know, how to get a direction within this restaurant. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Good night. Uh, David. Yeah. You tell me about the passion with the main lobster. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Same water as North Atlantic waters. <laughs> You're telling me now a Canadian lobster, half the price of a Maine lobster, is the same taste and flavor? There's a big difference. I can't get Maine lobsters. That's right, so they get yeah, them from Canada. I'm using Canadian lobsters. That's right, that's what they do. But, the but price... I don't advertise them as Maine. Tell me, is it a different animal? Maine mm -hmm. is a Canadian lobster for you. Amartus Americanus, same animal, right? Holy shit. I'm asking you a question. What you're trying to dictate to me is that you're selling Maine lobster. They're not from Maine. Well, it comes from the same vendor. Holy shit. The award-winning Maine lobster roll is Canadian. He was wrong about the lobster issues. It pissed me off. I thought that was a bit unfair for him to take that stand, and especially since he was incorrect about it. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. That was fun. Incredible. It's a new day, and Gordon has organized a staff meeting. How are we? Good. A rarity here at Black Pearl, as there have not been any meetings in the last seven months. OK. A quick exercise. So, I want to find out how you feel. We're going to write anonymous questions. When you write, make sure you put the name you want the question to at the top of it. Fold it up and put it straight in the pot. OK. Greg, how come you waffle with your answers? Well, basically, I try to keep everybody happy, because otherwise I wouldn't have a staff. And that's why I sometimes waffle and go back and forth. But if you had a, a little bit stricter philosophy yeah, for Yeah, I could some definitely things. be stricter. Oh, yeah, I could definitely be stricter. Thanks for being honest. OK. David, why haven't we got aprons? They know where the aprons are. They just don't choose to wear them. But why can't you say it's policy to be in an apron? Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Why can't you ask my question without a question? I did answer your question. You did? That is quintessential David. He'll answer you with the question. So to communicate with him can be very frustrating. David, show the girls some respect, will you? You're great at beating around the bush, you know that? Yeah. Well, huh? In front of everybody, why can't you answer the fucking question? I thought I did answer the question. Rather than trying to be such a smart ass and answer another question. I did answer the question. Do you know what I've just discovered? Hmm. You're so full of fucking shit, you'd make a great politician, you know that. David has the biggest ego. He's very stubborn. And obviously, you're not doing everything correct. So get over yourself and allow somebody to help you. Incredible. I'm fucking surprised you've got anybody working for you. Over the last half hour, you all look so, so cool as if you don't give a fuck. It's disgusting. And finally, to all three owners, why don't we have one general manager? What are they crying out for? Greg. Crying out for direction. They need a rudder. Make it one of the three. Why can't it be just one of the three owners? Thank you. Absolutely critical. One voice, one direction. So who's committed? I believe that I'm capable of doing it, uh, but now I have to follow through and do it. I think Brian and David will get on board. I'm going to get some fresh air. I'll see you later. As the owners were contemplating which one of them should be the hands-on manager, Chef Ramsay decided to generate some excitement for tonight's dinner service by adding a new special. OK. Yep. Right, time for a new beginning. 
OK. The secret of this dish is the lobster bernays, lobster they're going to eat first. Underneath is breadcrumbs, potatoes, and a hint of rosemary. First off, the membrane and the inside of the lobster, out. We serve this one, open and out. OK, done. And our potatoes. OK, get the potatoes nice and crispy. Yeah. Put our breadcrumbs in there. Two thirds potato, one third breadcrumbs. OK, now they're starting to colour. OK, good. Out. And lightly fried. OK, line the shell with that. Now, I want to see it ooze lobster. OK, on, and then we'll go with our sauce. Absolutely delicious. And then in the salamander, OK? This is a absolute pleasure to have him in here and showing us things, and we learned a lot. Mmm, lobster. I would pay $40 for that, yes? Right, get some forks in. Let's have a little taste. A little bit of pecorino, lightly over the top. It's delicious. I'm not blowing smoke at my ass, but that was fucking delicious. <laughs> it is great. I'm it's not very good. That. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Long day today. I want to try something for tonight. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to run in the place for an hour. OK. You expedite, and then you switch. And I want to see one person step up to the mark and take control of the ship. Unfortunately, the appendix out of all three of you is Brian. We don't need him. He's a nice guy and all that, but nice guys don't run restaurants. OK? All right. Thank you. David's going to be expediting for the first hour. Then we're going to switch back. If I have the choice of Greg or David, I would definitely I prefer Greg because I think he's a really nice person and great to work with. What's up? You get to go home. Really? Yeah. OK. All right. Am I out of here? Do you mind? I, I don't. I mean, is, you don't mind. That's great. Is, no. it, is it all right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely fine. Don't take it personally. Get up a relaxed evening. All yes. right. Excellent. I felt a little uncomfortable being pulled from my own restaurant, but I get to go home. Much longer. Open up. Open up and you're ready, guy? Okay. Hi there. Welcome to Black Pearl. Right this way, ladies. All right, you guys enjoy. Ready to rock. Thank you very much. And roll. The specials for today um, are on the front left. It's a, a one and a quarter pound lobster split in half, and then with the Bernay sauce on top of that. It's delicious, I have to say. It was really good. <laughs> Maru, next time you come back, would you bring me a diet soda in it? Mix a little bit of club soda in it, too, if it's not quite so sweet. Here, let me uh, get that out of your way. You want um, these? You want to keep no, these or no, take no, those no. away? OK. And don't just put the club soda at the end, because then it won't have the mixture. But, you know, mix it in. Thank you. Take care now. Good to meet you. So I have two fish and chips, table 36. Oh, how about I rip your fucking heart out? <laughs> Why? When David's expediting orders, sometimes I'm a little nervous about going into the kitchen to ask about my tables, because he'll just bite back at you. I, fi I, I fired this one, so. Yeah, but no, that's why it's over there. Right. Talk to me like I'm a real person, not like I'm an idiot. David, I just want to remind you, of this one I wrote, gluten-free. I got it. We're all set. We have several brains in here. Oh, my god. Uh, keep an eye. I'm going to go switch with Greg. Switch. OK. Right, we're halfway through service, and uh, Greg's on the hot plate now. I can't wait to see what happens. But personally, once a waffler, always a waffler. We'll find out. Muscles, Bangkok, thank you. I can't find them. Bangkok, Bangkok. There they are. That it is. Are you coming or going? How many are you? Five. Five. Under what name? Jackson. David sometimes can uh, patronize the customers a little bit. Jackson, five. I'd rather have someone that's going to be cordial about it than some asshole that's going to patronize everybody. Man, you guys are always annoying. Uh, Phil, this lobster roll sitting here. What's it going with? I didn't tell you it was even ready. It's waiting for a roast fillet of Talk fish. to you guys. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, it's just sat there fucking going soggy. Standards, yeah? Let's start to talk to me, too. I'm down here. It's a Blue Point, Malpec, and a Malaspina, and they said they already had it. They did. They did? Then why am I doing it again? 35? I have no clue. You can use Greg, it. we've got food backed up now. Last line of defense. Which tables don't like it? Well, it was um, my table 8 and table no 30. Did they fire it? No. OK, fire it. They're waiting. They already had their oysters. Mussels with garlic, lobster, bernays. Well, it seems to be slower on the hot plate with Greg yeah. at the helm than when it does David was there. Yes, it does. It seems to be a little bit slower with Greg. Damn. Greg, I feel, is trying his best. And a bisque. 
No? Jesus Christ, where the hell did that go? Why don't you call it so I know what it is? What are you waiting for, Doc? Oysters. Oh, they're coming then. All right. Maybe. Where the hell did it go? I don't have a lobster biscuit. It went out. Come on, get it together, man. Making another two. Shit's fucking getting very fucking tired. Getting very fucking tired of that shit. Fuck off. Just when things seemed completely out of control. I don't have a lobster bisque. Where the hell did that go? I'm getting very fucking tired of that shit. Come on, guys. Greg settled things down in the kitchen. Put the old girl on the plate and get her out of here. All right. Thank you, sir. 86 it. And managed to get the final few plates out. That's it. Start cleaning it up. Breaking it up. Before Gordon can turn Black Pearl around, he needs to find one managing owner. So he gathers the staff to make a decision. Okay. If all of you had to choose one out of the three owners to direct and to run this place completely, who would it be? Write it down for me. OK, first person, David. Second vote, Greg. Third vote, Greg. Fourth vote, Greg. And finally, Greg. This is pretty significant. You know that, guys. How do you feel, Greg, if you were to run this place? I'd, I'd run it the way I think it should be run. Um, I would do a lot more with the staff, um, and I wouldn't have to justify myself all the time. All three of you have fragmented this business. David, isn't it best that we listen to the team for that cry of help rather than having to massage your own egos? I think Greg would be a perfect general manager. David is full of shit. I've heard him say many times that Greg has no idea what he's doing in a restaurant. So it will be very interesting. I'd definitely like to give it a shot, for sure. Thank you all for being on it. Thank you. Well, one thing's clear, that the staff want Greg to run this place. Even David wants Greg to run it, so that's good news. But I'm not 100% certain that Greg has the balls to run this place properly on the back of tonight's performance. But what I can tell you is, the business does not need Brian. In the city that never sleeps, Chef Ramsay's team worked all through the night to transform the Black Pearl into a Manhattan hotspot. Brian, good morning. Good morning. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Everything is uniform. Oh, wow. Much better. <laughs> we haven't got three different sections with three different colors. It's not a mix and match. Oh, those are so cute. It's vibrant, classic, and inviting like it should be. Oh, this is so nice. Oh. I love the lobster. Right? It gives us a great boost. This is a, a, really, a real good shot at getting this thing up and moving the way it needs to be. David, what do you think? Column should be yellow. <laughs> Everything's reorganized. It's, you know, it's another way to do it. David, please don't touch it. Does it blow me away? No. I've got something to explain over here, something quite exciting. It was donated by the Marine Ecological Habitat. Now, I promise you, you'll never find another machine anywhere like this in New York. And David, I promise you now, between you and I, this is from Maine. <laughs> And of course, if they catch it, they eat it. Yes? I think it's terrific. <laughs> oh, you got it. We're going to have all sorts of people coming in there trying to get a lobster out of that. Oh! And people will be attracted to it. You are mine! And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. As the staff enjoyed the new interior, Chef Ramsay got set to reveal another change. It looks great. Happy, everybody? Yes. 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 Now. We have to market this place. Yes. And I can't do it without the help of our special guest. Here he comes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How you doing, buddy? Manhattan's favorite lobster. Right. right. We're going to hit Times Square and get some noise on there. We're going to hand out flyers. We're going to hand out T-shirts. We're going to shout it out. OK, Louis the lobster, I'll see you in uh, Times Square in five minutes, yes? Get going, buddy, yes? And Louis. If you fuck up, you're going in the tank, OK? <laughs> Please come visit us tonight. Being a 
in Times Square with Chef Gordon Ramsay. And all those people, it was a terrific idea. Have a great day, yeah? Thank you very much. I'm Love. your restaurant tonight. This New York, the word spreads fast, so I think people will be rolling in tonight. Come visit us to the Black Pearl tonight. Going to Times Square with a lobster guy and where all the tourists are and telling them to come down and eat at your restaurant, hey, we're not going to see any effect from that. I'd be really surprised. We love you we love tonight. tonight. Only hours before the doors open for relaunch, Chef Ramsay wants to get everyone up to speed on the new menu. OK, start off from the top. Uh, we'll go through each and every dish, and then we'll have a little taste after, OK? OK, good. Right, two chowders, yes? Uh, Manhattan clam chowder and New England clam chowder, yeah? The lobster roll, black pearl uh, special. And it's going to be toasted on the inside as well, OK? So it doesn't go soggy. And then we go to the Boston cream pie and uh, a waffle sundae. It's fresh, it's vibrant. Standards are going to be set tonight, and the kitchen's going to be properly run. OK, good. I'm going to get changed. Get some knife and forks. Start tasting. Ceviche. Majorly trendy. You taste the ceviche? It's so good. Oh, yeah. Not very good. I don't like it. Mm, really? Those scallops were so good. Oh, my god. This looks like heaven. I don't like that shrimp thing, either. That's amazing. Ah, and that's good, too. What kind of fish is it? It's codfish? I don't really like that. With relaunch night upon them, Gordon gathers the owners to implement his biggest change. When you think back to the beginning of the week, it's been a bit sort of tempestuous. But we did come to a consensus on who should be running this restaurant. This is a document basically outlining that all three of you are happy for Greg to be running the Black Pearl. Could you just read it out for me? We, the partners, David Leonard, Greg Ryan, and Brian Woods. Uh -huh. Agree to name Greg Ryan as the managing partner of the Black Pearl, at which time decisions involving bigger issues arise, Greg must call a meeting to present the proposed changes to all of the owners. A majority rule will determine whether or not the proposed changes should be made. That's it. Excellent. Who would like to sign first? My name's first. I'll sign first. I don't know if I have more faith in Greg. So if Greg succeeds, that'll be great. Wonderful. There you go. So you're now running this place. I am. Yeah. Good. David, Brian, tonight, you're coming as guests. All right. 6.30, table's booked. I'll see you later. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now get the fuck out of here. I definitely feel that I'm in control now uh, and that I'm going to run the business the way I think the business needs to be run. All right, guys, we're going to have a big night tonight. We have a beautiful new restaurant. We have a wonderful new menu, and we're going to have a lot of people in tonight, and that's the best thing that can happen here anyway. <laughs> so please, everybody, have a great time. Do a good job, and we're going to be great, OK? Yep. Thank you. Party of five? Party of five. Party of sweet, guys. Uh, office. Lobster. Lobster Bernays. All righty. Make sure the waiters get the customers up to have a little go of pulling the lobsters out. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yes. yes, I will right now. And then we'll guys. let you have them. Yes. Make sure, make sure we get the customers up to play uh, Lobsterama. We are encouraging customers to try for a lobster. Because if you catch one, we steam it for you, and it's free. Oh! Here we go. First course, New England clam chowder, field greens, and tuna ceviche. It's going to be a big night tonight, and this is Greg's chance now to step up to the mark and prove to him and his two partners that he's capable of running this business. We've got to flip tables, we're going to be in a lot of pressure, and more importantly, the kitchen has a menu streamlined they can push out quickly. Only time will tell. Real swordfish and a, uh... And a burger. And a and burger, thank you. Medium and medium rare and swordfish. Put the wrong table. What do I think? Where'd it go? Gordon, I introduce you to my closest friends in the world. Nice. Are you as stubborn as this one? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Nice. Nice. Gordon, I'm a guest. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, excuse me, yes. Uh, welcome. Come in, come out of the cold, please. We got a hostess over here, please. As customers roll in, the kitchen is about to be slammed with orders, and Greg and his kitchen staff are about to face their first big test. I need a chicken, a slider, a Bernays, and a two fries. Also, another fish soup, another burger medium. You're killing me, chef. You're killing me. The lanterns. Those things are terrible. I wish you put candles. Three chickens, four sword. Thank you. My table what? one. With table one. Sub salad. Where? They got the what combo. table? Table one. So what do they want? Instead of fries, she wanted a salad. Have it. I first saw the tank part, and I said, we got us a fucking lobster tank? The only one in New York. What does that tell you? What can we do? Anything? Got a gun? What's the matter? On table 27, yes. I put in the pearls and appetizer, and yes. I did not fire their entrees yet, and they're getting their entrees. Ah, yes. shit. Come on, hold on. Yeah, hold B3. On. This is all B3. B3, right here. B3. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Service sucks here. Kitchen must be fucking buried. Oh. Yeah, I need three New England pet I got grilled 
grilled swordfish, two soups, two seafood casseroles. I can't cook for two people calling orders. I don't give a shit. Just make it, you son of a bitch. I'll take this back, and I'll see what we can do about that, all right? 34 said he got him New England clam chowder. Give me a break. I need a Manhattan clam, I mean, a New England clam chowder now, jeez. Tonight has been like a clusterfuck again. The kitchen got backed up. It took forever for all of our food to come out. Come on, Greg, we gotta run it. We're falling behind in there, come on. It's ridiculous. That lobster salad has been sat down there for fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, What's going on? Yeah, it's supposed to go out with this table right Come on. Here. The uh, coleslaw, very different from ours. We had a great coleslaw. We had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. Greg, you told me 33 for the fish and chips. I did not tell you 33. I didn't tell you anything. Oh, my God. You got a pen. I got to rent this down. Note to Greg, our puppet dictator. So she wants a salad. Yeah. Give her a salad. That's all. Just tell me that. Ah. I ordered a medium rare. Where do you go? What do you need? Medium rare. Fuck. Uh, what does she want, this medium? Where the fuck is sick, you Why guys? Why don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. I got grilled swordfish, two soups, a sirloin burger, two lobster rolls. How many times can I call it? All right, I need table 20. I need table 1. I need, I need table 9. I got shit getting cold. It's been a chaotic evening. Right there, right there. It's going out the door right now. And the kitchen has been on the brink of disaster. Come on, you guys. You got to set your kitchen, too. We can't do it all for you, right? But Greg has not given up. Get him organized. And neither has his staff. I need three of these right off the bat. Just stack them up there. I'm going to 36. I'll be back. Excuse me? Who's the blueberry crumble people? Okay. What's the feedback from the table? Everyone really likes the food, even though it's taken a while to get there. Without having David O'Brien around, it was actually all right. It was pretty good. The staff worked very well together, and so that made me feel good all night long. The lobster was really good. Nice and buttery. You might have to do another waffle thing. Yeah, I have about four more. I'm not sure I need to All right. We've got one ticket left. Greg's doing really good. He's making decisions like right and left, and that's a big chain. High five, you guys. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen two, three months from now after Chef Ramsay has left. After a tough relaunch dinner, Gordon gathers David, Brian, and Greg to give his final words of advice. Tonight, you stood on that hot plate and you busted your ass off all night long. Mate, you've got a big heart. Fuck me if you got passion. Thank you. But whilst you've got the hunger and the passion, I don't think your two partners actually give a damn. You are an honest individual. You're here two days a week, but you don't put the effort in. You amaze me. What? Because all week long, face to face, you fucking pretend to care. Oh, fuck, Gordon, come on. You don't give two fucks about this place. Really? You're not passionate about running a restaurant. Really? You're just abusing it and using it. I, what, 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 what did I do? I've never met an individual that's so full of shit in all my life. How have I been lying to you, Gordy? How? Tell me. Gordy? Yeah, how? You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you, too. But tell me how, you, you, tell me, tell me how I've been lying I'm not disrespecting you. I'm telling you the truth. No, you disrespect me because you don't know the truth. You're just massaging your fucking ego. Gordon, bullshit. What do you mean, bullshit? It's not true. From the first minute you walked in this fucking door, standing there with your big long coat and your fucking sunglasses, looking like proud cock. That was it, first impressions. Then you start debating lobsters because you think you're some smart ass on the back of a few fucking shit dive books. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Homartus Americanus, same animal, right? Humanus Americanus, my arse off. Hmm. With 21 restaurants under my belt, I work my fucking ass off. So what? So what? And I never take anything for granted. Fascinating, Gordon. You treat the staff like shit. You never, amaze me. Never did that. Excuse me? Never. Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Never. You can't even be honest with yourself, let alone me. Mate, you've been exposed. Well, yeah, exposed. You're a hypocrite. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. For you, it's about a fucking TV show. This man is about a restaurant. Fuck the TV, David. And I mean, fuck it. This is real for me. And for you, it's an image. I disagree with you on almost everything you said. You do? Yeah, I do. Why do you disagree? Because you're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. 
You're a sad fuck. My advice is for him to get his partners, get your money out, yeah, and disappear. Yeah, all right, well, my advice would be for you to disappear, and the sooner the better. You don't get it, do you? Well, fuck you, Gordon. Of course I get it. This question has every chance of succeeding, but not while you are in it. Because you're not passionate. You're soulless. Say what you like. Let me get out of here. You're ungrateful. And do you know what really hurts? The amount of effort that's gone into it. Despite what a prick you've been to me, I'm still grateful that you were here. I love what you've done. I think that the menu is brilliant. You like it? I don't like it. I don't really like that. I don't like that shrimp thing either. It's what happens when I've gone. We had a great call slot. Come on, yeah. great call slot. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. The minute I'm out of that door, you'll slip back into I'll the old what, lazy what. ways. Why don't you come back in, and you know, I'm sure you will, and see how it goes. Yeah. Time will tell. I guess it will. Thanks again, Gordon. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. That's tough. I mean, really tough. And personally, I've got mixed feelings about this week because I so want this to succeed for Greg because he's got the determination, the guts to make it work. But on the other hand, David, well, I think he's just opened a restaurant because he wants to make a quick buck. And that is not the reason to open a restaurant. That man has no passion. Tough.